that? Welcome. I've just been wrapping up this birthday present for Alec, the storyteller. Did you remember it was his birthday today? Will we sing him a silly birthday song when he arrives? Happy birthday to you, squash tomatoes and stew, bread and butter in the gutter. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Maybe we better not sing that one. <laughs> Space Mobile Library. OK, bleep. Weech down, Alec, the storyteller. <laughs> oh, here he comes. I better keep this present out of sight. Oh, weesh, Boomba. Bounce away. Let Alec come in. <laughs> Ready? Pat one hand, touch your nose. Hello, Mr. Boom. Hello. 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 We've got a surprise for you today. Huh? Happy birthday. Alex. Thank you very much. Oh, but here, listen, it's not my birthday until tomorrow, oh. so I better not open it until then. Oh, yes, you have to wait until it's your actual <laughs> birthday, don't you? <laughs> right, let's get on with the story. Come away, in. <laughs> oh, what kind of a story <clears throat> would you like today? Something about presents and birthdays. I've got a story here about a birthday present. Now, I'm sure that this present is a very nice present, but this is a story about the awful birthday present. <laughs> <laughs> well, I read it. My logies are flapping. On Wednesday, after school, James went to Auntie Lizzie's house for lemonade and biscuits. Auntie Lizzie lived on the top floor of a big tenement building in Glasgow. James ran up the stairs, taking two steps at a time. Auntie Lizzie was waiting for him at the top. What's the hurry, James McGregor, she said. Are you running to catch a bus? It only took 32 seconds, said James. Do you like my new watch? It had been James's birthday the day before, and Grandpa Briggs had given him a watch. If you ask me, Grandpa Briggs has more money than sense, said Auntie Lizzie. There's a parcel for you on the table. I expect you thought I'd forgotten. James really hoped she had forgotten. Last year, she had knitted him a pink woolly hat with a red tassel on it. The year before, it had been green and pink striped socks. James opened the parcel slowly. It was worse than he expected. It was something knitted in green, orange and blue wool. He lifted it and held it up. It was a jumper. Try it on then, said Auntie Lizzie. James slipped the jumper over his head. The arms were too long and the body was too short. Auntie Lizzie beamed. I made a good job of that, I must say, she said. Don't you look smart? James looked at himself in the mirror. He thought he looked awful. Now, James, <clears throat> I want you to collect something from old Mr. Brodie's shop. He's going to live with his daughter, and I said I'd look after his parrot. She won't have it in the house. You won't need your blazer. You've got that nice new jumper to keep you warm. When James turned the corner, he took the jumper off and tied it round his neck. It didn't look quite so bad like that. Mr Brodie's shop sold second-hand books. It smelled old and fusty. Mr Brodie came shuffling through. Oh, it's you, James, he said. Come away through. The parrot was perched on the back of an old rocking chair. He was green with orange and blue feathers, just the same colours as James's jumper. What's your name? he squawked. James, James McGregor, said James. James McGregor, the parrot repeated and gave a cackling laugh. <laughs> What's his name, Mr Brodie, James asked. He's called Rabbi, said Mr Brodie. Have a cup of tea, have a cup of tea, screeched Rabbi and flew over and landed on James's shoulder. Cheerio, Rabbi, Mr Brodie patted Rabbi on the head. I'll be in to see you soon. 
Rabbi cackled and talked all the way back. He whistled after all the pretty girls, and he said something very rude to Mrs. Duthie about her hat. Then, when he turned round, he saw there were six cats following him. When they passed the park, Rabbi flew up into a tree. James called, Rabbi, come down at once. But Rabbi paid no attention. Then James saw that Rabbi was holding something in his beak. He had pulled a piece of wool from James's jumper and all the stitches were coming undone. Oh, what would Auntie Lizzie say? The cat sat at the bottom of the tree and meowed and a crowd gathered and called, Pretty Polly, Pretty Polly! But Rabbi wouldn't move. Then someone phoned the fire brigade and they brought along a ladder. They told James to climb up it. When he held out his hand, Rabbi jumped onto it screeching, Dial 999, dial 999, and the wool dropped from his beak. The cat started to play with it, and it got into a terrible tangle. Auntie Lizzie was quite upset when she saw the jumper and was very cross with Rabbi. I hope you're not too disappointed, James, she said. I've none of that nice bright wool left. I'll just have to knit you one in another colour. James hoped she would take a long, long time. <laughs> that was a grand story. I liked the bit when the cats got all tangled up in the wool. It ruined the awful present, though. <laughs> well, I must be on my way. It's nice of you to visit. <laughs> I want to get my round finished before my birthday. Hmm? Oh, aye. Thanks very much again for the present. You're welcome. Bye-bye. 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 Cheerio, and have a very happy birthday when it comes.